Good morning students. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. Students, in this class of Biology, today we are going to talk about the class Amphibia. As I have described in the earlier videos that phylum Chordata is subdivided into two super classes in which the first super class was Pisces which I have described in the last video and in this video we are going to study about the tetrapods which is the second super class of phylum Chordata. Super class tetrapoda means those animals which consist of two pairs of limbs means those animals which have four limbs. In tetrapods the first class is amphibia. So today in this video we are going to talk about the class amphibia. So first of all I would like to tell you what is the meaning of the word amphibia. So the word amphibia is originated from the Greek words. There are two Greek words. The first one is amphi means both and the second is bios means life. It means the animal which is capable to spend their life on land as well as water. They are called as amphibians. So the word of amphibia means the animal which lives in water as well as land. These animals are capable to live on the lands but they require water for their reproduction purpose, for their fertilization purpose. Hence they live both the habitats. So after the word, now what about the introduction? So in class amphibia there are about 2500 species are included. The second point is the smallest class of vertebrates. As you know, vertebrata is a subphylum of phylum Chordata. In vertebrates, amphibia class is the smallest one because it cons con consists of only 2500 species. Now, we will talk about the general characters of class amphibia. So, first of all, they are aquatic, means they live in water. Semi aquatic, they may be live on a place where water and land both are available. So, you can say they are semi aquatic, they are not found in the sea. Any amphibia not present in the sea water. Carnivorous, they are carnivorous, means they uh, are predators. And tetrapods, means they have four limbs. Next point is the body is divided into head, trunk, head and trunk, neck and tail may be present or absent. You may see in the diagram the body of frog is divided into head and trunk, means head and trunk both the important parts of the body tail or neck may present or may be present in some cases tail is present neck is present but most of, most of the amphibians consist of only head and trunk so the body is mainly divided into two parts head and trunk now limbs usually two pairs as i told you before that in tetrapods there are two pairs of limbs so the first pair which is known as forelimb while the another pair which is known as hind limb so the limbs are two pairs tetrapods hence they are called tetrapods some limb limbs but some animals like ichthyophis are limb limbs means the limbs are totally absent in some amphibians which are basically belongs to class apoda uh, here i have write that they are limbless so mostly amphibians consist of two pairs of limbs while some amphibians are limbless the next point is the exoskeleton absent. Exoskeleton means the skeleton which forms the outer covering of the body. Suppose uh, as I have told you in the fishes, the scales were present as an exoskeleton. But in amphibians, the exoskeleton, the outer covering is totally absent in the body. So the exoskeleton absent is skin soft. As you can see in the diagram of frog, the skin is soft, moist glandular and may be pigmented so the skin is soft moist and glandular so the amphibians consist of loosely pitted soft and moist skin which is maybe gelatinous and pigmented some amphibians are capable to change their color due to pigment transformation now next point is the endoskeleton is bony as i have told you that they belongs to phylum chordata chordata means those animals in which bones are found so the endoskeleton is bony both the jaws with a small homodont teeth now the mouth of amphibians is slightly large and both the jaws the upper jaw and the lower jaw consist of minute teeth which are homodont now what is the mean of homodont teeth homodont teeth means all the teeth are similar in shape and size 
In the contrast, in human beings, you can see that there are four types of teeth in a barbuckle cavity, like incisor, canines, premolars, and molar. But in fishes and amphibians, the teeth are always homodont. This condition is called as homodont, while another condition in which teeth are different types, which is known as heterodont. So, the homodont condition is found in amphibians. It means all the teeth are alike. Now, the next point is alimentary canal terminates into a cloaca. As I have described in earlier videos that alimentary uh, canal complete meaning the there are two openings in the alimentary canal the first one is mouth and the second one is anus but in amphibians anus is totally absent here is a single aperture which is called cloaca in which three openings first one alimentary canal terminates into cloaca genital apertures terminate into cloaca while the urinary tract also terminate into a into the cloaca so the cloaca is a single opening which is found at the end of the body you can see in the frog the cloaca is present in this situation so uh, all the tracts opens into a cloaca now the next one is respiration by lungs and skin now respiration by lungs some amphibians which spend their life on land and water respirate through the lungs when they are on the land but if they are in the water they respire through the skin gills in the aquatic and larval form the gills may be present in the larval form and some aquatic amphibians amphibians maybe live on the land when they are on land they will respire through the lungs while when they are in the water they will respire through the gills and skin when the respiration takes with the help of his skin then this type of respiration is also known as cutaneous respiration now the next point is the heart is three chambered as i have told you before that in humans the the, the heart is four chambered like two upper chambers are auricle while the two lower chambers are known as ventricle but in amphibians there are only three chambers present in the heart the upper two chambers are known as auricle while the lower one chamber is known as ventricle so you can say the heart is three chambered next is rbcs are large the rbcs of the blood in amphibians are large they are oval shaped and nucleated and they are nucleated in the contrast in human beings or in mammals the rbcs are non nucleated nucleus is totally absent in our rbcs but in case of amphibians the rbcs are nucleated it's an important question for the competitive exams excretion takes place by kidneys kidneys are the organs for excretion and they are ureotelic as i told you before when the animal excreted urea as their excretory waste that is known as ureotelic so all the amphibians mostly the amphibians are ureotelic sometimes they may be ammonotelic but most of the times they are ureotelic the next one is cranial nerves are 10 pairs cranial nerves the term itself describe that the nerves which are present inside the cranium in our body this is our skull the front part of the skull is known as face while the posterior part of the skull is known as cranium so the uh, cranium protects our brain and all the nerves which are present inside the cranium suppose that the nerve which carries uh, which are attached to the eyes to the brain which attach our ears to the brain are known as cranial nerves so all the nerves which are present inside the cranium are termed as cranial nerves now the cranial nerves how many cranial nerves are there there are total 10 pairs of cranial nerves external ear is absent you can see in our body that this is the external ear but in case of amphibians external ear is totally absent here the ear is present in the form of tympanum actually what is tympanum tympanum means ear drum so the external ear is absent in amphibians but the ear is present in the form of tympanum so you can say in amphibians the external ear is absent now next is they are unisexual when the sexes are separate male and females are separate then the animal is known as unisexual so amphibians are unisexual males without copulatory organ males do not have their copulatory organ they copulate without the copulatory organ they release the sperm in the water mostly and the female also release their ova and fertilization takes place externally in the water so the male without copulatory organ females mostly oviparous most of the female times female 
lays egg so they are oviparous exceptionally maybe they may be viviparous but most, most of the time the female is oviparous as it lays eggs now the fertilization mostly external as i told you when the male release their sperms in the water while female release their ova in the water then fertilization takes place inside the water and this type of fertilization which takes place outside the body is known as external fertilization so in amphibians the fertilization is mostly external now the next is development usually indirect as i told you when the development takes place with the help of any larval form then this is known as indirect development so the development of amphibians is indirect next point is the larva is tadpole as the de development is indirect so there is a larval form which is known as tadpole it appears like a small creature of fish and it is found in the water which metamorphoses into adult and after some time this tadpole larva converted into the adult and the phenomena is known as metamorphosis through which the larva converted into the adult now the next point is nostrils are connected to the buccal cavity here these are the nostrils there are one pair of nostrils which are connect to the buccal cavity in most of the animals the respiratory tract and the digestive tract are separate but in some cases respiratory tract it attached with the digestive tract so here in amphibians the nostrils are connected with the buccal cavity now the next is they are cold blooded cold blooded means the animal which are unable to constant their body temperature according to the environment are known as cold blooded means the body temperature is not constant so they are known as cold blooded and the scientific term is used for the cold blooded animals that is poikilotherm animals so you can say the amphibians are cold blooded or poikilotherm means they are unable to constant their body temperature they are hiber sorry they shows hibernation and aestivation present you may say what is hibernation in the cool in the cool winters they are they becomes inactive and lays inside the mud water so this condition is known as hibernation which occurs during the winters but this condition if occurs in the summers then it is known as aestivation period you can say in the simple words the inactive period of winters is known as hibernation while the inactive period of summers is called as aestivation so both the conditions hibernation and aestivation can be seen in the amphibians now the next is amphibians show great parental care parental care means to look after the young ones by their parents so in amphibians you can see they protect their eggs they form their shelters they protect their larvas so this is known as parental care which is clearly seen in the amphibians so next point is amphibians originated during the devonian period of paleozoic era uh, i will make the videos on the geological time scale according to geological time scale the time is divided into different eras like cenozoic era mesozoic era archaeozoic era so there is an era which is known as paleozoic era and this paleozoic era consists of a time period which is known as devonian period so amphibians developed during the devonian period of paleozoic era so these are the general characters of this phylum sorry this class now we are going to talk about the classification of amphibia but before that i would like to tell you something about the outline structure of the frog which is an indian frog the scientific name is rana tigrina so you can see the structure that the frog consists of two main parts the upper part of the body is known as head while the posterior part of the body is known as trunk there are two pairs of limbs in which the these are the fore limbs and these are the hind limbs hind limbs are comparatively large and consist of food web which helps in the leaping so this is the belly portion this is the eye mouth nostril tympanum that is the external ear or ear so this is the structure of frog an outline structure of frog now what about the classification of class amphibia so first of all the class amphibia is divided into two sub classes in which the first one is stegocephalia all the animals of stegocephalia are extinct 
the second one is less amphibia means the living animals so the sub these subclasses in which the first subclass consists of extinct animal while the second subclass less amphibia consists of the living animals now this subclass less amphibia is further divided into three orders in which the first order is apoda the order apoda consists of those animals which are limbless blind and worm like the tail is absent or short tail may be absent or short and the best example of class apoda is ichthyophis it is a worm like creature and it is a limbless creature the next one is urodela the order urodela consisting lizard like animals with distinct tail the tail is greatly developed so the animals of order urodela appears like the lizard next one is limbs are two pairs as they are tetrapods so the, the limbs are two pairs gills permanent or lost in adult in aquatic forms the gills may be permanent throughout the life and the respiration takes place with the help of gills throughout the life but if the animal lives on the land most of the time then gills may be lost and the animal respire through the lungs or skin neoteny found neoteny it's very important term for you and mostly asked in different examinations so what about the neoteny neoteny is a condition in which the larva becomes sexually mature it does not convert it into adult it only becomes sexually mature and enlarge in size and capable to reproduce this condition of amphibians is termed as neoteny and the best example of neoteny is axolotl larva which is even adult but commonly known as axolotl larva it is totally sexually mature but the body form appears like the larva so it is the best example of neoteny the another example of order urodela is salamander so now i would like to tell you the last class sorry last order that is anura the order anura consists of true frogs and toads so they are called frogs and toads now amphibia without tail in adult now you can see in the frog the tail is absent in the adult the tail is present in the larval form which is the tadpole larva so in order anura a means absent the tail is totally absent in the adult they are commonly called as frogs or toads as i told you before adult without gills adult does not consist of gills because gills are present only in the larval form which is the tadpole larva skin loosely fitting as you can see in the diagram the skin of the frog is loosely fitting glandular moist and the best examples of the class sorry order anura are frog toad hyla and buffo so it was all about the classification of class amphibia so in this video i told you about the introduction about the general characters and outline structure of frog ranatigrina and the classification of amphibia so if you have any doubt any question any query you may ask in the description box Thanks for watching. Have a good day.